Well, that was another fantastic episode. I want to thank you, Mr. Favreau, for making mine and everybody else in the UK's lockdown just that little bit more bearable. Last week's episode was the bee's knees, making one wonder how on earth they could possibly top that. I wouldn't say this episode quite takes the cake like last week's did, but it sure as heck is another good 40 minutes to pour your time into. I highly recommend you go and watch this series and this new episode if you haven't done so already, because we're going to be dissecting every nook and cranny the passenger provided us with. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button because these are weekly videos I'll be making alongside my famous Doctor Who reviews. So without further ado, let's get on with the review. Does anybody else end up thinking of the song Take a Bow by Muse when they watch this Star Wars intro? No? Just me? Episode 2 starts at the tail end of last week's episode. Mando is travelling back to his ship with his newfound looty booty. You've really got to admire the sound quality that's going into this new series. We had Lion's Breath on the flamethrower last week, and this week I noticed how authentic and satisfying the sound of Mando's speeder is. Accompanied by the classic sound effects, the gears and engine are so profound that it makes me wish I could have seen this new series in the cinema. Back when they were a thing. <laughs> Anyway, Mando gets ambushed by some crooks. Word is still spreading about the child, yet the remaining survivor is mainly interested in the jetpack. The jetpack that he only just acquired, mind you. But even this had a backup plan, similarly programmed like the child's floating cot. I was happy to be reminded this week of Mando's seemingly only weakness, that being the child. Where the previous episode had very little Baby Yoda involvement, this one has plenty of him, which I was very happy about. Then we got a shot of Mando looking totally freaking badass with all his stuff hauled on his shoulders. This is representative of his burdening responsibility when it comes to taking care of the child. He returns to Mos Eisley to meet up with Pelimoto again. Sidaris once again nails this superb mechanic character, especially when she speaks frog to her friend. Motto was also the reason behind this chunk of meat Mando was carrying with him. This was truly strange seeing the back part of a vehicle heating up some meat, but then again it's not impossible to cook food using a car engine. That taste of petrol. It was at this point I thought the episode was going to be a courier side quest that wouldn't add up to much. Boy oh boy was I wrong. You do get warned that this isn't just a fetch and retrieve mission when Mando says, Travelling sublight is a bit dicey these days. Even this dreamy childlike music that's heard in this episode gives the audience a false sense of security that we're in for a sitcom episode this week. The child's attempts at eating the eggs was at the heart of the humour in this episode, considering a baby eating babies is quite the bizarre idea. We see him yearning for the food in a rather unique way, as it would appear he's using the force to pull the eggs towards him. We know it's too late before Mando hits the sack, as we hear the sound of liquid sloshing around behind him. It's certainly part of that theme of parenthood we see developing between these two characters. Every baby in the world just puts things in their mouth seemingly for no reason, but of course this child's carnivorous hunger makes mockery of this idea idea that he's just a cute little fuzzball for great comedic effect. After that we get a great segment where Mando essentially gets pulled over by space cops under the banner of the New Republic. Dave Filoni was back for a cameo here, seen previously in season 1's episode The Prisoner. Interestingly, this very episode was referenced right at the end of The Passenger when Mando had to face judgement for his recent activities. This is the point where things escalated fast as a chase sequence ensued in to this frozen planet. I loved how the sound of the ship descending matched up really well with the frog screaming in the cockpit. Not a single note of music is heard during this segment until Mando escapes the NR fighters and started descending beneath the ice. After catching the child eating the eggs again, I realised just how amusing it was to witness Mando being the only one there who could speak English. I mentioned in the previous review how Mando's improved his speaking skills and yet here he has no means of expressing himself as all his inner chatter fell upon deaf ears. The tension shot upwards as it became clear Frog Lady might notice how few eggs there are compared to when they departed, which escalated again when she used the robot from the Prisoner episode to translate herself. I did wonder why the clip of him getting blasted to oblivion was shown in the recap 
at the start of this episode, but still, this was another character who I definitely wasn't expecting to make a comeback. I reckon Mando didn't even know that the droid was capable of such a thing with his suspicion towards droids. Maybe he could rig it up to do some karaoke. Wake me up. Wake up. With the characters surrounded by ice, I did wonder if we were going to see some equivalent to the Hoth Wampers from Empire Strikes Back in here, but instead we saw Frog Lady bathing. I honestly thought this was going to be the part where the child was going to eat an egg right in front of its mother, but thankfully Mando stepped in to do the dad thing, leaving it to explore the cave instead. This is where the action really picked up, and you can tell the sound designers really know their craft. As that soft and childlike wonder music came to an end, this long violin note just rings for such an uncomfortably long time until the camera pulls out and we see the creatures starting to hatch. I say creatures because at this point we have no idea what's inside those eggs. This underwater pulsing sound starts to get faster and faster and then only when the child has been scooped up by Mando do we truly know that they're spiders. There was some serious Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets vibes going on here, except that the detail here was just ridiculously impressive. It was here that all my preconceived notions about this episode were just splattered in seconds. There were so bloody many of them. You don't truly realise this until they get back to the ship and they're crawling all over the walls. I mean, my god! And the giant mummy spider thing, the mouth spitter thing, and its eyes it just completely freaked me out. I let out a humongous yes at the sight of Mando priming his flamethrower, and by the time all the characters were cornered in the cockpit, then came the real payoff of the episode, seeing Mother Frog protecting the child. That was a top dog moment. Woof, woof. More of that fantastic attention to detail can be seen when the spiders are crawling up the windscreen. Seeing what are essentially spider footprints added to the realism induced by this threat to our protagonists. More importantly though, this is exactly exactly the spot where they see the daddy spider as it plunged down from above. The weight of this monster was felt from the sound design here, where I once again gasped at the shock of what I thought was going to be an easy escape. Thankfully, the NR saved the day, where we get the rundown of what they know about Mando. Prisoner X6911, I'm assuming, was that purple bloke they broke out of prison last year, and Lieutenant Davin was the guy who Mando wanted to prevent the killing of had Nymphadora not done so. It was great as well that these two weren't swayed by an offer or deal that Mando tried presenting to them, as they are the authority in the galaxy now. They cannot be bought, which I thought was so fascinating. I am truly looking forward to this faction being developed, if at all. Although, if it could be without this weird trap-infused music, that would be greatly appreciated. The episode concluded just like episode 2 of season one did with a fixer up montage. If the show is still going in this continuous story angle as it has for the second season thus far, I'm betting we'll definitely be seeing this frog lady again next week. Just a couple of points of interest to round off this video, the first being that you may recognise the director of this episode Peyton Reed, as he directed the Ant-Man movies. Little surprise given the fantastic comedy he was able to bring out of his performers in this episode. Finally, the crate dragon that appears in the previous episode has indeed appeared before in Star Wars, but not in the way you might think. Right at the beginning of New Hope, after the droids separate, just look at this corpse shown in the background of C-3PO. God damn, Disney has some nerds working for them right now. Thanks for watching. If you want to support my content, please consider making a pledge on my Patreon page for as little as a pound per month. What did you think of this episode? Comment below your thoughts or join us for a chinwag on my Discord server, where we'll continue this discussion.